Good evening, everyone. What a joy it is to be gathered here tonight on Giving Tuesday. Our world is so full of need at the moment. But the silver lining, I think, is that the voice of Mother Gaia is starting to be heard. And so too are the voices of women. Need is indeed the mother of all creation. And in these times of global hardship, we've seen a tangible softening and a leaning towards the sacred feminine, a slowing down, a shift towards nature, towards nurture, and to a greater sense of compassion for one another and a keener awareness of the importance of community and our connectedness as a planet. The virus has known no distinction between east or west, north or south. And if we turn our gaze to the underserved communities of the global south, where traditionally women experience so much less power in their lives, we get a sense of how important it is to address this imbalance. If you educate a woman, you educate a nation. You have only to look at countries with female leaders to see how they're getting it right. However, unfortunately, unlike so many of our planet's problems, which are to do with the overuse of resource, resources, women are sadly an underused resource. And this is one of GRS's secret sources the empowerment of young girls. <laughs> they make up 55% of grassroots soccer participants. And in communities where gender inequality and violence, violence against women are enculturated, GRS programs are leveling the playing fields and giving young girls the tools and confidence to make healthier choices and so giving them the hope of a much brighter future. Well over 30% of adolescent girls in Africa are victims of sexual and gender-based violence, and this is just the reported statistic. Over half have been pregnant before their 18th birthday, and unintended pregnancy puts a girl at much greater risk of HIV and other pregnancy-related complications. But girl graduates of GRS programs are three times more likely to test for HIV and 63% more knowledgeable about the availability of sexual and reproductive health services. And they are 100% more likely to credit sport with increased self-esteem. Any <laughs> Anyone in the room with teenagers will have likely witnessed how the negative impact of lockdown affected their mental health. Isolated from their social lives with peers, their sport, their hobbies, and other collaborative activities, our youth have experienced a significant increase in anxiety and depression. So just imagine how much greater the impact in communities of the global south that already face the daily challenges of food insecurity, enculturated violence, gender discrimination, and a staggering scarcity of mental health resources. In Zimbabwe, a country of 16 million, there are only 12 psychiatrists. And in these communities, our grassroots soccer coaches, many of them women, are acting as mentors and positive role models for girls and boys alike, offering them safe spaces to have difficult conversations around sexual health and puberty. Teenagers need to be heard. And in cultures where many subjects are traditionally perceived as taboo, this open forum facilitated by our GRS coaches and curriculum is hugely helping to improve mental well-being. But further, for a planet sinking under the burden of population explosion, giving young women the confidence to have autonomy over their own bodies and the knowledge to make informed decisions around birth control is a vital metric for the health of our planet. The programs really are game changers. And I'm so thrilled to be up here tonight to present the first ever Grassroots Soccer Game Changer Award to a truly deserving Shiro of our times. This award honors a leader who has changed the game in adolescent health by empowering young people globally. Candidates are individuals who exemplify Grassroots Soccer's vision for a world in which all adolescents, no matter their circumstances, are able to take control of their health 
and live happier, more productive lives. This year's winner of the Game Changer Award is a leading champion of gender equality and a dedicated advocate for young women and girls, both in her native South Africa and around the globe, Dr. Pumzili Umlamba Mwuka. <laughs> Since her days as a student activist fighting against apartheid, she has worked tirelessly on issues of human rights, equality, and social justice, with a specific emphasis on gender education and youth development. Beginning as a member of the first ever democratically elected South African parliament, and culminating as the nation's deputy president, the highest ranking female political leader in the nation's history. She spent her time in office focused on undoing laws inherited from the apartheid regime and spearheading programs and policies to reduce inequality. Dr. Umlambo Mluka served an eight-year term as the United Nations Under Secretary General and Executive Director of UN Women. In her time with UN Women, she led innovative work on transforming social inequalities and discriminatory norms launching an initiatives such as the He for She movement, which drives men and boys' engagement in gender equality, and helping countries change hundreds of discriminatory laws that negatively affect women and girls. She now chairs an organization that she founded in South Africa, the Umlambo Foundation, which works to improve the quality of the nation's school. As a fellow South African who was born into a profoundly unjust society, I have a deep sense of appreciation for the road Dr. Pomzili has traveled to achieve all that she has done. At last year's virtual gala, she spoke of the importance of surrounding yourself with people who give you hope, and I love that. She is a shining example of integrity and grace, and um, I am truly honored to ask Dr. Pomzili to please come on stage and accept the first ever Grassroots Soccer Game Changer Award. I would now like to introduce a fellow Grassroots Soccer Global Board member, Dawn Averett, who will join Dr. Umlango Unuka for a conversation. Dawn is one of the nation's most prominent HIV and AIDS advocates, as well as an accomplished speaker and published writer on women's health issues. She is the founder of The Well Project, an organization dedicated to improving the lives of women living with HIV and AIDS and changing the course of the AIDS pandemic through a focus on treatment and prevention for women. Dawn is also founder of the Women's Research Initiative for on HIV AIDS, which has been instrumental in shifting the research paradigm to include more women and people of color. Please join me in welcoming Dawn to the stage. I think there is no better person, from my perspective, to receive this inaugural Game Changer Award. Thank you. And, um, absolutely. And when I think about all that you have done and your incredible experience, I would love to know what you're thinking about right now in terms of the kind of challenges and the opportunities that you see for adolescent girls and young women today. Well, firstly, 
I'd just like to say thank you to Grassroots Soccer for these kind words and for the encouragement that this award gives me. And thank you, Don, for the work that you do, for being a role model for many young girls, and for having the courage that you have every day of making sure that living with HIV doesn't deter you to be the person that you are. And you always remind us about that. So thank you so much thank for that. You. What was the question? <laughs> this is where we get comfortable. Um, <laughs> I really want to know, kind of, as you're looking forward um, from the incredible experience you've had, what do you think are the big issues? What are the opportunities? What are the challenges in front of us? Yeah. You know, we are now living at a time of great encouragement um, of social media, of young people who are very outspoken who will not wait for you to talk. They will tell you whether you want to know it or not. Right. And I think that's an opportunity for us. We live at a time when we have organizations such as Grassroots Soccer that provide a platform for those young people to communicate with us, but also to act uh, to address the challenges that we face. So as much as I think many of us are feeling very disheartened about the state of the world, I'm looking for opportunities in this uh, sort of dark cloud where we can bring out the strength uh, of young people because they are going to be and they already are a majority of human beings on the planet. And if you ignore young people in whatever journey that you are taking, you are actually ignoring the largest majority of the people that you need to take the world forward. So I would say to everyone who's here, if you're not hooked up with young people, go do it now. <laughs> I think that's very good advice. Um, I, I laugh about that often because my work in HIV started in the 80s. I, my own personal experience with HIV started in the 80s, and I used to represent the young people. Um, you will see now that that is no longer the case, <laughs> but you might find some young people in the room to yeah. <laughs> give you some of their experiences. And I think when you think about the GRS programs, um, you know, starting initially with kind of very focused on how do we prevent HIV and how do we help these young people learn the skills that they need to, to prevent HIV. Um, and then over time, expanding to really recognize that HIV is just a piece mm. of the puzzle that all of these uh, young people, in, especially in Africa and Sub-Saharan Sub Africa, are dealing with. So it is about how do we prevent intimate partner violence? How do they learn about sexual reproductive health? How do we deal with the mental health challenges that they're dealing with? Because all of that is, is necessary. Those are the building blocks to be able to truly prevent HIV successfully. So as you think about the skills, you know, both the programs that we provide and share for the kids who are not living with HIV, thankfully, today, mm -hmm. as well as the programs for adolescent girls who are living with HIV, you know, where do you see um, opportunities for um, the power of mobilizing these young people? Um, where do you see those opportunities coming uh, as we move forward? Yeah. Well, I would say that uh, just starting with where uh, Grassroots operates mm -hmm. in communities and in the schools. Uh, because even though we are still challenged because we don't have all young people attending schools, but we have the large majority of young people that go through 
education, and schools. I think uh, the fact that uh, grassroots soccer has reached uh, more than 86,000 young people uh, is thankfully because of being able to reach young people in schools. So that's a constituency that uh, we should not neglect. And also because uh, education is uh, in any way uh, a mechanism that stops age to some, no, doesn't stop, but reduces right. uh, the possibility of being um, infected. So it is important to encourage young people to be at school. The presence of coaches in school uh, helps us to retain as many young people as we can in the schools. But also, AIDS was a generalized disease, but it has now become a disease of young girls because they are the majority of those who are infected. And it really infuriates me because many young girls are infected because of non-consensual sex, because uh, in their relationship with older men, they don't have the power to negotiate sex appropriately, and because when they are infected, access to services to them is very difficult. So we have to deconstruct every step of the way to make, to prevent, as well as to get them help that will give them a, a good health. And I think people like us who work in that space with young people have a responsibility to know all these dots. And the fact that young people like sports, and it's important to make sure that their love of sports must become a mechanism for them to get better health. I mean, uh, I don't play soccer, <laughs> but I can kick a ball or two. <laughs> I can kick a ball or two if pushed. <laughs> but I, 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 I respect soccer for what it can do. It, it can be and has been a life savior to many um, young people. So it's important for people like you and me to constantly bring it to the fore so that it can play that role of being an enabler to a more meaningful, more richer life uh, for young people. I couldn't agree with you more. I think that, that um, living in this world of COVID, we have seen a number, uh, we've seen some pretty very uh, daunting statistics. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that in some settings, uh, at least a quarter of the girls are not going to school mm -hmm. now. Um, that there are challenges uh, way beyond what, in some ways it set us back in, mm -hmm. in you know, not just a year or two years, but maybe five years or 10 years. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, even with the incredible successes, the work is not done, and we have mm. to kind of pick up and continue to do it in a way that makes the conversation worth having. And if being on the pitch and being able to connect with friends and colleagues and having coaches that you trust um, really provides an avenue for mm. people to share their experiences, I think it's truly extraordinary. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I think just in, in, to wrap up, I, I think we have had, um, grassroots soccer has touched millions of children's mm. lives. And, and actually, from my perspective, one of the most important pieces is um, the, the tens of thousands, perhaps, of coaches, of 18 to 30 year olds mm. who didn't necessarily have a role to play in their community, who developed all of these skills and became a trusted source. 
So I think that the story for grassroots soccer is much bigger than just what happens on the pitch for yeah. a handful of kids who are able to participate, but really the broad reaching um, experience of being a part of the GRS program overall. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I am truly, truly grateful for your leadership and for um, the opportunity to share this stage with you for a few minutes and talk about this Game Changer Award. You have, in fact, been an incredible game changer. So thank you for all of your work. Thank you. Well, I am really thankful for this award, for the encouragement uh, uh, that it gives me, and hopefully, for the hope that uh, it also gives to young people. After I left uh, uh, UN Women, uh, I was reti have retired, <laughs> but I really work with young people now, and this is the age group that we are concerned about. So being able to tell them about grassroots, ho grassroots soccer is a uh, an opportunity to take the message uh, further. But also, um, COVID is a mental health problem, uh, amongst other many things that uh, it is. Uh, young people are not challenged just because of HIV, because they have challenges of mental health, because they have food insecurity, because they have health problems. So what we are able to provide with the coaches uh, is an opportunity to address all of these issues uh, together. It's important for us never to forget that a young person is not isolated. A young person needs an ecosystem that will speak for them. And to make sure that we're not only speaking to girls, that we're also speaking to boys. Uh, we need to make sure that boys, uh, actually this gender equality thing is a guy's thing. <laughs> you know, because they cause the problem. <laughs> so getting the men to take responsibility to be in the forefront of addressing gender equality is critical. Getting the men to be in the forefront of addressing uh, the issue of equal pay in soccer is a men's issue. That's right. And so it is important at a very young age to conscientize the boys about their responsibility towards uh, society and to make sure that they embrace these issues and together gays and boys uh, uh, work together. And they must also know that when they take up these issues and boy, they are not going to get a medal because they are just doing their responsibility. We will, we will not praise a fish for swimming. You know, they are just doing their job. And I think once a man reaches a responsibility where when they take gender issues, they don't expect to be praised, then we have succeeded in creating a proper human being. Thank you. Thanks. There are going to be a lot of tweets based on that. <laughs> we won't praise the fish for swimming, but um, I think that this has been an extraordinary opportunity to hear just a little bit from you and your incredible experience. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks.